Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Reverend Grace Jerome Kavma, the assistant vicar at Namgongo Matters Church. We thank the Almighty God who has enabled us to meet again as children of God to sit under the discipleship of His Word. As we are going to listen to His uh, Word today, let me ask you to bow down and let us ask for His Word, for His help in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity you've given to us to listen to you again. I pray that you will fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, enable us to understand what you have for us today, and help us to live as children of God. This we pray trusting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, I ask you to open it to Matthew chapter 8, and we shall read from verse 18 to 22. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 18 to 22. It says, When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, First let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Brothers and sisters, I want to speak to you under a theme that encourages us to have faith in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. The reasons as to why we should have faith in the Lord are clearly in our passage that we have read. And the first reason comes from verse 18 to 20, which says, have faith in the Lord because it is costly to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And secondly, from verse 21 to 22, have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because it is urgent. We have an urgent call to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is how I want to start. I'd like to, um, to share a brief testimony that I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I was still in primary school. But the only reason as to why at that moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior was to have protection, to have someone to protect me. Because as I have been growing, I've always been in small in size. I've always told the people that it was not because of the stress of COVID-19 that I was um, small in size. It was just that the way I was created. So because of my small size, I was usually bullied in primary school and I, was, I did not want to go back to school where I was going because there was bullying. So during that moment, when I was in holiday, I asked my mom to, um, that I wanted to go and, um, uh, and attend another school because I don't want to be bullied anymore. She told me that if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he who lives within you will be stronger than he who is in the world. Therefore, you will not be bullied anyway. So I thought I was going to get this supernatural power when I accept Jesus Christ. I accepted and thankfully, um, it worked, but then I've come to realize that as I've grown, it needed more. I needed more reasons to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, just not only for the basis of having protection. Jesus is more than a protector. He gives more than protection. And the passage that we have here before us, we have a man in verse 19, a teacher of the law, who says that he wants to follow the Lord. Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And we think that Jesus Christ, I believe, would have embraced this man who wants to follow him because this was the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought the mission of the kingdom. He wants everyone to come and accept. But why is Jesus responding and saying in verse 20 that foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the son of man doesn't have where to lay his own head? And the reason is in the motivation that this man had in wanting to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see that when you open Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 to 29, and they say, When Jesus had finished saying these things, the Sermon on the Mountain, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Why? Verse 29, because he taught as one who had authority, you see the contrast, and not as their teachers of the law. So when we come back to our passage, who wants to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 19? A teacher of the law. So this teacher of the law is looking at the teacher of the law who is Jesus Christ as one who is having more power, more authority, more influence, more prestige, and he wants to follow him. What is running into his mind is like, 
something like this, that if I have authority as a teacher of the law now, how much more authority will I have if I accept Jesus Christ? If I follow him, if I have power now, how much more power will I have? If I have more privileges, how much more if, if privileges will I have if I follow this teacher of the law? And the Lord Jesus Christ does not want this man to follow him just because of what Jesus Christ is able to give, but he wants this man to follow him because of what Jesus Christ is. And I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters. At this moment, are you following Jesus Christ because of who he is? Because of the fact that he's your Lord and Savior? Or you're following him because of what he brings, because of what he gives, because of the blessings that he gives? And the challenge that he's giving to us this day, he's saying that it's not that I do not want you to follow me as my Lord and Savior. It is not that I, I do not want to follow me, but I want you to follow me for the right reason. I want you to follow me because you understand that I died for you, because you understand that I reconciled you with the Father, because you understand that I made you a child of God. And secondly, verse 21, we see an urgent call. On verse 21, the other disciple, a person who had already lived with the Lord Jesus Christ, a person who had already known that it is sacrifice to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you give up quite a lot of things for you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ faithfully. There is quite a lot that you're going to go through. Preachers of God's word who go for missions, they become sick. Some of the people lose beloved ones. Some of the people who are confidently following the word of God do not have followings. You see churches that faithfully preach the word of God, they do not have many followings like those ones that preach what the itching ears want to hear. So this disciple knew what it was to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And therefore he comes up with a justifiable reason that Jesus Christ is not going to be able to, he's not going to deny. Because remember, Jesus Christ was a Jew. He knew that it was, uh, it was required for a person to go and stand for one who has lost a beloved one. So this man comes up with a reason that Jesus is not going to look, uh, to underlook. And he says, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. He comes up and weighs the kingdom of God because the number one here is calling, is calling upon a question of priority. When you look at the kingdom of God and when you look at any other thing that you're considering as important in your life, what are you going to consider? And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to this man that it doesn't matter what you're considering as a priority in your life. In regards to the kingdom of God, there is nothing that weighs heavier before the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why he's saying that follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, the challenge that we have today is that let the Lord enable us to understand that when we look upon everything that we have been privileged with in life, in regards to the kingdom of God, God values his kingdom more than anything. We are called for a life of sacrifice. We are called to a life of pain as Christians. We give up for the fact that we understand that he who loved us, he who cares about us, gave up as the first person because he gave up his life such that you and me can be able to stand as Christians today. But when we give up, we have not lost it. If you can quickly follow with me in Matthew chapter 19 from verse 28, Matthew 19, he says, Jesus said to them, truly I tell you that at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for the sake, for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. My brothers and sisters, this passage is not calling upon us to abandon our responsibility. But this passage is challenging us to look upon the kingdom of God as something that is more valuable than anything in life. That as you're trying to look after family, as you're trying to look up to your job, as you're trying to fulfill your responsibility, are you able to acknowledge that it is only the kingdom of God that is going to enable to, 
is going to please the word is going to please the Lord Almighty. That as I do my ministry, I point my people to the kingdom of God. I, as I fulfill my responsibility. I fulfill my responsibility as I point people to the kingdom of God. As I stand in the different responsibilities that God has called me to fulfill, I do everything having a mindset that the kingdom of God is where we are all going to go. Therefore, let us have faith in him, the Lord Jesus Christ, because the cost of following him is high and it is urgent. There is nothing that we are going to achieve in this world if we are not having the perspective of the kingdom. May the Lord enable us to stand in everything that we are doing, understanding that the message of the kingdom is the message that this world desperately needs. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much because you have spoken to us. You have challenged us to reflect on ourselves. The motivation that we have in accepting you, in following you, in serving you, it should all be fixed on you, Jesus Christ, as our personal Lord and Savior, as our King and Creator of all everything. I pray, Lord, that you will enable us to live as children of God, and push the kingdom of God, because that is what you want us to do. And our dear friends, I pray that the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will continue to keep your hearts and minds. May he continue to grow you in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may that blessing be upon each one of you, be upon your families, be upon the different responsibilities that you're fulfilling. May that blessing never leave us from now until eternity. Amen.